what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome to Beginning C Sharp with Unity Screencast Series. This is a new free series being offered here at raywinderlich.com that is somewhat different from our regular video tutorials. Before I get into specifics, I have to answer one important question and that answering will determine if this series is for you. What's that one question? Well, it's a simple one. Why is this series being made? Before I answer this, let's get some context. When you think back in the past 10 years, game development was a very different thing. Getting started with game development as an indie developer probably meant buying a Flash license. Chances are you'd be targeting a Windows platform and doing any multi-platform development was beyond reach. While there were open source 3D engines like Ogre, Using them required a strong foundation of C++, a language that isn't considered beginner friendly. Forget about getting a hold of a AAA engine. For a hobbyist without an extra $100,000 lying around, those, images, those engines were off limits to all but the AAA game development studios. But something funny has happened in these 10 years. In the span of 10 years, we've seen the commodification of game engines, what once cost hundreds of thousands of dollars dropped to the floor with most allowing complete access to the engine with an affordable subscription component or to be entirely free. These engines have provided on-ramps to the hobbyists and with the mere click of a button, a one-person team could produce a game to be played not just on Macs and PCs, but a full range of mobile devices and consoles. Never before has game development been accessible to the hobbyist or independent developer, but unfortunately, it has presented another problem. While game engines were finally opened to anyone to use, the skills needed to use them can look steep indeed to the beginner. First, you need to learn how to use the engine's editor, that is, how to create scenes and place objects and design your games. Then you need to know a programming language. This in itself can be a large hurdle indeed, as programming lang languages tend to evoke the same kind of night sweats and terrors as a, high school, as a high school math class. But knowing the language isn't enough. You also need to know the integrated development environment for that language as well. This is the software application you use to write your programs. Finally, you need to learn the application programming inter interface or API of that engine and how to use it. Believe it or not, this can actually be even more time intensive than learning a programming language. This API is what you'll use to manipulate your, this engine in code. And yes, you will need to write code, lots of it. All that knowledge is required just to get you started. Later, you may want to learn a modeling program to import custom objects into your game or fix others that were given to you. You may also want to learn a shader language to tweak the visual appearance of the game. You'll probably also want to learn a sound editor to create custom sounds. In short, there's a lot of stuff for you to learn. And if you are just starting on the bottom of this mountain, you have a long climb ahead of you indeed. Some engines have tried to avoid this climb by developing beginner friendly languages or developing a type of visual programming languages. These approaches can make you can allow you to make a game faster than everything I've mentioned, but you'd be stuck using them. If you ever want to work as a professional developer or work as part of a game development team, chances are you'd be required to learn everything I mentioned. In essence, that shortcut will turn out to be a long one. Also, learning most programming languages for a game engine can be applied outside of game development. For instance, if you learn if you learned C Sharp for Unity and found that you didn't like game development but enjoyed working with that language, you could easily reapply those skills and become a .NET developer or use a third party tools to create, say, iOS apps. Yes, it takes more time to learn the harder approach, but that time invested will give you more options inside and outside the game development community. So why is this series being made? It's to help you ascend that mountain of game development so you can make your own games. This series is intended for the complete beginner. If you've never written a single line of code and can't tell a for loop from a fortune cookie, you are in the right place. If you do have some programming experience, then this may help you understand some of the ins and outs of the C-sharp language, 
but you may be better served using a quick guide reference instead. The approach of this series is as follows. You're going to learn the C-sharp language from the context of Unity. Most aspiring game developers simply want to hit the ground running and can be easily turned off by from the business of C-sharp. There's a lot of stuff you have to learn that has nothing to do with Unity. So instead, you'll learn C-sharp inside of Unity, thereby giving you experience with the engine, introducing you to the API, and showing you how everything works. Trust me, once you have learned the language in the context of Unity, it's rather trivial to learn how to use it outside of Unity. Thus, it's better to save the grunt work for when you know how you want to use such work versus being a barrier to, uh, being a barrier to entry, entry for your development aspirations. As I mentioned, this series is a screencast, meaning the emphasis of this series will be on actual demonstrations. This is not meant to be a static exercise. Do everything you see on the screen as you'll learn through imitation. At the end of this video, you'll be presented with a challenge. Do these challenges. They are not optional. They will test what you've learned in a gentle way. Finally, once you've completed the challenge, turn to the forums. If you have any questions, please raise them here. If you have any suggestions for a better approach, place them here. And most importantly, if you see another question, that you know the answer, by all means answer it as you'll learn just as much in the explaining of a concept as you will in practicing it. The idea here is we all grow together through the sharing of knowledge. We are all students, we are all teachers. Enrich the community with your struggles as you may find future answers or even collaborators from those whom you have helped. As I mentioned, this series is entirely free. If you are interested in learning other aspects of Unity, check out our written tutorials from the RayWinderlich.com Unity team. These will help you grow your Unity development experience and become a better Unity developer overall. This series is going to cover a large range of the C-sharp language, but it, is not, it will not be entirely comprehensive. There will be some parts of the language that will be explored, but by the time you finish this course, you'll understand where you can fill in those gaps. This course can be completed on a Mac or a PC, although it will be recorded on a PC using Visual Studio. The course will not cover Visual Studio in any meaningful way, but some things may appear different when using Model Develop. As always, if you have any questions, please ask. Well, that's it for this introduction, but as always, we'd like to leave you off with a challenge. Your challenge is to complete this screencast in a way that you understand everything mentioned. If this means that you have to rewatch large sections or the whole thing, then do it. Remember, this isn't a race to the end. You may want to fly through it and pat yourself on the back for watching so many videos, but if you can't remember the concepts raised in these videos, then you've wasted your time. Watch, learn, understand. The rest I leave to you. Well, that's it for this introduction. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.